What's up guys? So we have a leg day today. Um, so as far as anything massively different with this workout, not gonna be a whole lot. So we're gonna be starting with squats, supersetted with the seated leg curls, um, and then we're gonna get into hacks and lying leg curls. And depending on how far and how hard we take those, that might be it. We might add one thing on the end. Um, so if there's anything a little bit different, it's myself, Bryce, and Terrence are gonna train today. Terrence is eight weeks out, seven, seven, and, a seven and a half weeks out. Um, and so it's for all of us, we're kind of in a pretty good spot. So Terrence has been, you know, had a little bit of an up and down off season, but overall he's been in a good spot to actually be making some pretty consistent progress. Um, he's at a point now, we're kind of eight weeks out from a show. You're in a pretty good spot. He's still got some food, you know, he's got some cardio going in now. So his training should be at a pretty good spot. Um, and again, just between my kids actually starting to sleep a little bit, same thing, Bryce, actually a little bit of a consistent schedule. We're all in a decent spot where our output's starting to ramp up just a little bit. Um, so again, you guys will see if, if we don't go ape shit, you know, so if we were doing maybe, you know, a total of, I don't know, let's say six working sets, you know, we kind of have the volume very, very low, four, five, six working sets. You know, today we might be doing seven or eight working sets. Um, so you guys will see if you've been watching the last couple leg day videos, all that it's gonna be is a slight increase in the load on some things, taking some things a little bit further. And, and same for Terrence, I mean, for being at eight weeks out, he's actually still at a point where he can probably put on a little bit of muscle. Um, you know, we don't really have to taper his volume down too much. You guys have heard me talk about before. At some point in time, when he's in a steep enough deficit, he's gonna take, your, take the volume down pretty low just to try and hold on to muscle. When you're at that point when you really know you're not gonna grow anymore. Uh, but today he's kind of still in that middle spot. Um, we'll make sure he gets a good hard workout um, and still kind of get his feedback as well too. So again, we're not gonna go ape shit and try and do 12,000 working sets just for the sake of beating the crap out of somebody. We want to have things pretty appropriate. Um, so that's the setup for today. I'm going to get in a little bit more for you guys for some kind of setup and form and cues and stuff for any new guys watching that haven't watched the old videos back for a while. So giving a couple extra tips here and there for, you know, as far as again, setup, execution as you're going through the movements. And then obviously you'll see all of our working sets and the pain that we go through and all that good stuff. All right guys, so a couple little setup, uh, form cues and stuff on this. Again, seated leg curl, in my opinion, the best for output, isolating knee flexion. So again, obviously RDLs and things with the hips are great as well too. Uh, but again, if you want big hams, in my opinion, you have to overload knee extension or knee flexion as well too. So the whole benefit of this opposed to a lying leg curl is the bracing. So really the biggest thing on this is setup. And we're setting everything up to keep things as still as possible. So the little basic stuff is you wanna basically, if it has a pivot point, you'll see where it actually, the lever of the machine actually moves. Try and get your knee lined up pretty well in that position. 
Then from then, everything else is gonna be set up. So once you have that in position, you want the back pad pretty close to your hips. Then we're gonna go ahead and put your ankles up, Bryce. Basically, you wanna have everything, where everything's kind of right, straight in line, hip width apart. So again, a lot of people mistake is they have their feet far apart or their knees far apart. And you want to look at your kneecap. You want it pointed up when you're at the top and you want it forward basically whenever you're going through the motion. So again, you'll see a lot of people kind of comfortably let their knees rotate out. And long term, again, for knee health, again, if you're gonna do this the way that a bodybuilder does it with that amount of volume and that amount of load and that amount of frequency, you really wanna make sure that knee's lined up in place. Then from there, the thigh pad, you wanna put this as tight as you can possibly get it to go. So Bryce has got it really tight here. Sometimes if you wanna take it a step further, if you don't really feel like it's smashed down in there, you can have a training partner press down the ankle pad, relieve some tension from here, smash this down, and now when Bryce brings this back up, that's gonna be smashed into his thigh. And that's pretty much the setup. Once he gets going, you wanna see that basically it's his knee joint and everything else down here is the only thing moving. Everything else is completely lock and stone. So once he gets going, the big thing from here is using this pad. So when you're at the top of the motion, so Bryce will come to the top, you wanna to feel like you're smashing your thigh up into this pad. And as you come to completion, if you don't have a belt, go ahead and press your hands into the handles or into that thigh pad. Because again, at the top, the weight at the beginning is pushing you this way. So you wanna press up into this pad so your whole leg doesn't move up. And when you pull to the bottom, the weight essentially is pulling your whole body this way. So you wanna press in opposition into the pad from there. And that's pretty much it as far as setup goes. Make sure that everything is lined up, knee, hips lined up on the pad, all these lined up straight. Again, you get your feet, your knee, and your hips all about the same width, kneecap pointed straight up and slightly forward. And then from there, it's just using the pad and using the pad handles to make sure nothing else is moving. And then obviously when you guys watch the working set, that's the challenge. We're gonna do working set, just trying to keep all that still. And the only other things you'll see is just having control of the end ranges. So again, the big mistake a lot of people hear, they'll swing it into the bottom where you're not actually contracting into the bottom. So you see the pad actually kind of bounce at the end instead of actually holding a contraction. And same at the top. One of the benefits of this exercise is to overload the length and position. So if you bounce right in and out of that top, then you're gonna uh, lose the benefit of actually loading the hamstring in the length there. Oh, 
put your hat on, man. He's a wrestling king. Hard, 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 hard. Good, man. Come on. Hard, 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 hard. Good. Come on, man. Four. Go, 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 go. Go. Come on, hands. One more. Pretty easy. Hold on that negative. Pause at the top. Hard squeeze, all hands, all hands. Finish strong. Come on, flex as hard as you can, hard as you can. Finish, you can. finish it. Come yeah. on, come on. Nice. Good. Good. Good with you there. Yeah, me too. All right, guys. So we're doing a heel elevated um, safety squat. If you don't have the safety squat bar. The next best thing I would say would be doing a front squat. You know, so again, if you're looking for something that's a quad dominant squat, those two are fairly interchangeable. The only reason I would give this exercise a slight edge over the front squats is it's just easier to hold the load. Um, and so again, you know, both of them are going to be a little bit taxing on your upper back. So it's one of the slight drawbacks of this, maybe as opposed to a hack. Uh, but again, it's still, in my opinion, for a lot of people, one of the best exercises that fits them getting into a fully lengthened quad position. So the goal is to get your hamstring on your calf. That is depth. Um, the thing that will change here is we want to use a heel elevation. So even if you're like me, I'm built a little bit better for squats, longer torso, shorter femur, I'm still using a heel elevation, just maybe not as high. If you don't have these, just use like a five pound plate. It's honestly not that massive of a difference. The longer your femurs are, so Bryce has much longer femurs relative to his torso, basically the higher the heel elevation is going to give you a little bit more benefit. But from everyone from there, whatever you're using, you want to try and have just your heel on the wedge so don't have your entire foot on the wedge just the heel have nice broad contact with your ball of your feet and your toes spread nicely and almost everyone you want to take what i would consider here a slightly wider stance again a lot of bodybuilders feel like they have to be in this hip width stance or sometimes even closer in general take a stance that's going to be easier for your hips to move the easier your hips move the easier you're going to be able to get to that fully flexed knee position hamstring on the calf so from there, all you want to do to cue is you're feeling like you're keeping your torso rigid. So again, when you breathe in before you go, take a breathe in, feel your belly go out, brace hard against that. And you just want to feel everything of your midsection staying tight. So Rex abdominis, TVA, internal external obliques, the best cues if someone's going to punch you in the stomach, how you would tense everything up. And your lower back and upper back is going to have to stay tight just to keep your spine from rounding and going over. The cues from there is initiate with the knees. So feel like you're pushing your knees forward and out and actively push them this way and slightly out the whole time. You'll see as I go to the bottom, I keep pushing my knees out, all other things being the same, that creates a little more room for your hips to get down and again, to get to that fully knee flex position. So you wanna push your knees forward and out, ideally to even get to the position where your hamstring is smushed into, that's why I say covering or touching your calf, that is pretty much the bottom position. And the only thing that will change that for most people is you wanna always stop before your spine rounds. So I'll have Bryce going over here, We'll actually have him put the bar on his back. Hopefully we can get a decent side view from this. So whether you're using the safety squat bar or the front squat bar, get it in, get it locked in, get it stable. Take a couple seconds. I always say brace before you go. So feel all this is tight, locked in stone. He's gonna push the knees forward and out. And you'll see some people can get a little bit deeper than others. Bryce still gets to the point where his hamstring's pretty much on his calf. But again, just because of the length of his femur and his belt, he's not gonna quite smush in as far as I can. You want to go right here. I'll have Bryce demo one if he goes a little too far. You'll see I'm talking about his spine. Look at this straight line of his spine. If he sinks in a little too deep, you'll see the spine kind of start to pull under or he's going to have to hyperextend his upper back or do something to compensate. So the neutral spine position you start with, you want to stop before that ever pulls out of position. And then from there, the only other cues are the exercise is all about the bottom. We are training it for that bottom position. So while you want to be slow and controlled the whole time, especially into the bottom, you'll see people accelerate and actually move the fastest in the bottom and bounce out of there, especially from a bodybuilding and hypertrophy standpoint. If you want bigger quads, you want to make it as hard as possible there. So get to that position, feel like you can pause there, feel like you can get there under control and use your quads to initiate, not bouncing, not momentum. Try and feel like you can go a little more weight on the outside of the foot because as you're going down, the stance is pretty wide. You know, a couple, even though your knees kind of line up pretty well, I can see like this foot particularly is kind of flattening a little bit. It's doing a little bit of that motion. So um, I don't think you need to stance quite as wide. So literally maybe like an inch in, still drive those knees out. But as you're going down, just have a little bit of awareness, a little bit more weight, kind of stay on the outside of your foot as you push in so it's not kind of caving too much.
Big difference between this and the seated leg curl is this trains a different range over there because your hip flex, your hamstring is lengthened at your hip and when you fully knee extend, you're lengthening at the knee so it's a fully lengthened hamstring here because you're extended at the hips and you're fully flexing the knee, you're gonna train the hamstring through its fully shortened range. It's also a little bit more to manage as far as keeping your torso and pelvis still. That's generally why you'll see in my programming. I like to keep the seated leg curl prioritized first so keep that where you can have your full output and then here, once they're a teeny bit fatigued, let's train a different range, you know, keep it in a position where maybe it's not gonna be as much to manage at the hips because the load will be a little bit lighter. Same thing here is that the seated leg curl, as far as setup goes, is getting everything in the right position to start and then just keeping things still. So when he's going, the easy way before you even get started is taking your knee to the point where it's just on the edge or just in front of the edge of the seat and lying straight down in from there. And most of the time, that'll lie the knee joint up pretty close with the actual axis of the machine. Then from here, you just want everything hip width again in just the teeny spit brace. There we go. And again, it's tougher to see the knee joint here, but if you imagine you want your kneecap pointing straight towards the floor the whole time, you wouldn't want it turning out or pointing this way at all, which is one of the biggest mistakes. And so the biggest thing is keeping it there through the range. Some people will start here, and then as they curl, they'll let their knees kind of rotate out. The rest is just keeping everything locked in stone. So feel like you have your thigh pressed flush on the pad. That's the most important point of contact. So you don't want to feel like your thigh is moving at all. You don't want to feel like it's turning. That'll keep your knee right and plain. But you also don't want to feel like you're lifting your knee up or lifting your hips up. As you come to the finish, sometimes your hips might move a tiny bit as you come to the finish. Ideally, you want to keep them as still as possible. But again, the most important contact point is the thigh. So Bryce will do a couple reps. And as you'll see, his big focus, especially as he initiates, is driving his thigh down into that pad getting a good hard contraction. You see he gets that hold at the top. And again, a big mistake is people launch the pad here, so they're kind of swinging it up to the top. Sometimes you'll even see the pad come off of the back of people's ankles. They won't actually hold it for a second. Get to a position, this is the position we're training for, this fully shortened ham. Squeeze the ham there, make sure the pad is fully stopped. And then same thing at that end, make sure that there's no bounce from the bottom. And that's the big thing. You'll see all of this. Thigh particularly has to be unmoving. Hips as still as possible. Torso is tight, so he's kind of pulling himself down in, squeezing tight with the lats, some of his upper backs up, keeping his midsection and abs tight. And then again, getting a hard squeeze at the top, no bounce at the bottom. Again, you'll see the only thing moving is the knee joint and the lower leg. Oh. Oh. 
Finish, finish. Work. Work that negative now. All right, guys, so form and execution for uh, hack squats. Again, if the goal is to bias quads, I'm going to give you a little bit of some pointers on how to set up the uh, bands as well, too. Uh, because, again, just from a profile standpoint, um, it is just overall a better exercise uh, because it gives you more load where you can tolerate more, which is at the top. Basically, you can tolerate more as you go higher through the motion. So as far as setup goes on this, you should go pretty much the exact same stance width and toe position that you would your kind of knee dominant squat. So for how you would do a safety bar squat or a front squat, basically for most people it's going to be outside of shoulder-ish width grip and toes pointed slightly out. And if anything, especially on this, the limiting factor will rarely be hips, it's going to be a little bit more ankles. So opening up a little bit more anyway will pretty much ensure that your hips generally aren't going to run out. And then it's just a matter of setting up stance so that your ankles go. You don't have to cue as much with what breaks first, the knees or the hips, because of the back pad. The knees are the thing that are going to go forward, your hips can't go back. And then all we're looking for is trying to find a foot position where you can get to the bottom. Bottom is the same position as a squat, meaning we're trying to get your hamstring onto your calf. And the things that you want to watch out for, because there's a lot less to manage here than you would say on a squat, is just make sure that your pelvis isn't pulling rounded off the pad. So make sure that your lower back or your hips aren't moving off the pad. And then make sure that your uh, heels are not coming up off of the platform. So Bryce is going to demo a couple reps for us. You'll see if somebody wonders why. We just have these on here because this brand of hack, it bottoms out quick for people basically my height and under, 5'11", 5 5'10", 5 and under. Um, so we have the pads on there so you don't bottom out as quick. So you see he's got his stance about shoulders with toes slightly out. You want good contact everywhere. So depending on your neutral spine, you can have the slightest arch here or you could have flush on the pad. Either is fine. Wherever you set your spine and your pelvis, just have some awareness of that that it never moves. So as he goes down, he's letting his knees go over his toes, so a little bit of an out component. He's going basically as low as he can before his pelvis moves, before his heels come off the platform. And then same as anything else, we want nice controlled reps, especially at the bottom, even with bands, that's still kind of the hardest part of the motion. And again, Bryce is Mr. Long Femur, so if you have short femurs, you might be able to sink in a little bit lower, a little bit more comfortably. But as long as you're getting to the point where your hands are on your calves, hips aren't moving, feet aren't moving. And then just to look at where you want the bands. So we have it set up here. You want at the top, like he has now, they're pretty much completely slack. And you'll see as he goes down, Basically, once he's a quarter of the way down, if that, they come on, and they're obviously gonna have the most tension at the bottom. So that's the biggest thing of the setup, is you want them pulling at the bottom, and you want them essentially relaxed at the top. So for here, it's a matter of semantics from the machine. We just wrap the band around, put a carabiner around, but if you wanted them a little bit tighter, obviously you could put them on something like the uh, daisy chains or something like that, attach them to a different point if they're too loose or if they're too tense, you can rack it, Bryce. Um, and then the only other thing people will ask is how much and how many bands, there's not an exact science, I say go by your failure reps. On your last rep, your failure rep, you want the last six inches of the rep to feel just as hard and be going just as slow as the bottom six inches of the rep. So for a general rule of thumb, this is a band from Elite FTS. It's their heavy band. I think whatever it is, the orange one, obviously, is they're all the same for this color. So if maybe you're doing anywhere from two to four plates for your working sets, one band tends to work pretty good. As you go above six, seven or so plates, we go to two bands. So basically, it's not like an exact science or does it need to be because everyone's bodies are so different as well too, but it will always 
always be a percentage of the total load. So if you just had one thin little red band wrapped around, that wouldn't make that big of a difference from the top to the bottom. So again, it's gonna be at least a decent percentage of this total load. And again, the reason we have them slack at the top and then tight pretty quick once you start the rep is we want a big difference from the top to the bottom. If we literally actually had a little scale pressing into the pad, you know, at the top, if we have 600 pounds, when this is loose, it'll be 600 pounds at the bottom. And let's say when we drop all the way to the bottom, you know, it's 150 pounds off, then it'll be 450 pounds at the bottom. So we're creating 150 pound difference from top to bottom. And so it's some discrepancy kind of like that, that you're going to want to create with those bands. And then aside from that, you get the band set up properly. Just focus like you'll see on the working set, trying to keep every single rep look exactly the same, trying to keep the failure rep looking the same as the first reps, not letting any part of your body move except motion at the hips, knees, and ankles, and everything else is staying lock and stone.
All right, guys, so that's it. Um, as you can see, Terrence is still like cemented in that machine, staying close by the bucket just in case. <laughs> um, but overall, honestly, very, very good leg day. I mean, people will think, depending, that there's maybe been a time or two when somebody comes in town and we try and put it on them. But for the most part, we just train the way that we're scheduled to train. We've been training fairly consistent with Terrence. Obviously, Bryce and I have been in a groove for a couple years. So we're all in a pretty good spot where we can appropriately pick it up just a little bit. So even from last week to this week, um, basically, I mean, for me personally and all of us, I had the same weight for my top set on squats, went up two reps. On leg curls, I went up in weight, um, keeping the reps similar on both working sets of seated leg curls. On the hacks, I went up on my both sets, the top set and the back off set, still matching reps. Um, and then on the leg curl, same thing, similar weight for both, but went up in reps a little bit. So basically went up to seven total working sets for the workout, which is one or two sets over last week, and improved pretty much on top sets everywhere. Um, so again, nothing dramatic. And again, the difference for me, if you guys have been watching for a little bit, is just a matter of sleep. <laughs> so my recovery is really getting back on point. And once my sleep is in place, I always up my food a little bit, so my recovery has been great. I've been able to progress from workout to workout. And that's just a pretty standard workout for all of us. We get to the point where, not that it's the goal, but if we are actually pushing the variables week to week, by the end of the workout, we're pretty much what I would like to call appropriately fucked. Um, so laying on the floor a little bit, squirming in agony from lack of gas and build up. And that's generally a good gauge for me, nothing scientific, but normally after my top set, I'll have lack of gas that I'm dealing with for a solid 10 minutes. Uh, that really makes it hard for me to walk or function as a human, get a good lack of gas and headache. Um, generally my eyeballs start to hurt. Um, so those are all good signs. And then if it clears by 20 minutes, then I said, I feel like I'm doing pretty well. So as always, I haven't changed a whole lot of variables with this leg day. You'll see if you want a little extra, Bryce was doing some walking lunges. The rest of us decided to be bitches and not do that. I figured we got enough from it. But if you really look at lower body, um, from hamstrings to quads, full contractile range, obviously getting a lot of glutes and adductors working as well. Very, very complete leg workout if you're doing the movements well, if you're progressing the loads and you're building upon it consistently week to week. <laughs> 